one week ago, these people became hypnotic subjects. Join them now as they see themselves for the first time in the hypnotic world of Paul McKenna. Gentlemen, please welcome Paul McKenna. Thank you, good evening, and welcome once again to the hypnotic world, a unique place which some of our studio audience are about to visit when I invite them to join me here on the stage and be hypnotized. Now, as usual, I must stress that this is a completely safe and positive process. And just a quick word about safety. In the unlikely event of anything going wrong this evening, let me assure you that we do have a fully equipped high-speed vehicle standing by outside, and I will be in it before anyone can lay a hand on me. <laughs> so if you'd like to volunteer, then please step right this way. These are tonight's volunteers, and it's from this group that I'm going to select the real stars of tonight's show. But as you know, the rules of broadcasting do not allow you to see the full hypnotic selection. You've just seen a few minutes worth of hypnotic induction squashed into a few seconds. Our volunteers are ready and it's time to let their imaginations go freewheeling. It's 12 o'clock on a Monday afternoon and you're doing what you normally do on a Monday afternoon at 12 o'clock. My name's Keith Webster from Horsham. I only came to make up the numbers because I knew I wouldn't be hypnotised. <laughs> I'm Julie Dale from Downham in Bromley and I'm a nanny. I'm Sharon Webb from Reading, and I'd never seen Paul McKenna's show before. <laughs> I'm Cara Matthews from Buckinghamshire, and I would never have believed that I would be hypnotised. My name's Phil Truman, I'm from Surrey. I saw the stage show a couple of times before, and I was fairly sceptical. <laughs> I'm Paul Smith from Sutton in Surrey. I saw Paul McKenna's show at Croydon, and I was very open-minded. My name's Caitlin Gardner, I'm a student, and I also work at Richmond Theatre, where I saw Paul McKenna's stage show. I'm Alan Woolacott from West Norwood. I thought it would be impossible to hypnotise me. <laughs> I'm Duncan Jelly from Westminster. I work for British Gas, and there was no way that I was going to be hypnotised. <laughs> My name's Nicole Lewis, I'm from Hounslow, and I'd never been hypnotised before. 12 o'clock on a Monday afternoon, what are you doing? Well, I'm just generally doing my office work. What do you actually do for a living? I'm a marine surveyor. Oh, right. Do you ever go out on a boat? Yes. Oh, look, yes. you're on a boat now. There we are. And it's just sprung a leak underneath you. Oh, my goodness, that's it. Quickly. Oh, look, it's really coming in now. I'm oh, it's out. okay. No, no, it's, not, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in your imagination. <laughs> 12 o'clock on a Monday afternoon. What are you doing, madam? I'm trying to learn my lines for college. Oh, right. What do you do? I'm a drama student. Oh, right. Oh, look. Steven Spielberg's just come in. Oh, that's it. Go on, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm, yeah. What are you doing, madam? Receptionist. Yeah. Those people keep ringing up. Yes. Yeah, some of them are a little bit rude. 
Oh, all the, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there's it's another one. Look, here we are. Good afternoon, BMW Heathrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, this well, one's being really rude. Three, 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 you want the service three, department? We'll certainly say I'll put you through. Yes, I'll put you through right now. <laughs> it's all right. I'll put you through. <laughs> God's sake. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Everyone's back to you. Sweet, 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 sweet. The potential of the human mind is as infinite as the universe itself. A fact our volunteers are about to find out as I send their imaginations to boldly go where no one has gone before. When I awake you in the next few moments, you're all going to imagine that you are astronauts sitting on the launch pad in your rocket ready for liftoff. Ready? Eyes open. Wide awake. OK, ignition sequence has started. Five, check systems. Four, contact NASA. Three, turn the gas off. Two, put the cat out. One, we have liftoff. Feel those G-forces. Yes, that's it. And you're lifting off. You're leaving Earth's atmosphere. Yes, fantastic. And you've become weightless. Get out of your spaceship and walk on the moon's surface. It's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. That's it, yes. Zero gravity walk on the moon's surface, and you're all going to return now back to your spaceships because as soon as I snap my fingers, you're all going to find that you've suddenly been transformed into Martians from outer space. Ready? Now, off you go. That's it. I'm going to come along the line, I'm going to touch you on the shoulder, and I want you to talk to me. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Martian. What do you think of these Earth people in? <laughs> Oh, Hello there, Mrs. Martian. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Mrs. Martian. What do you think of these Earth people? <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Martian. What have you got to say for yourself? <laughs> yeah. Hello there, Mrs. Martian. What have you got to say for yourself? <laughs> okay. Would you, Mrs. Martian, and you, Mr. Martian, and you, Mr. Martian, come and join me? Would you, Mr. Martian, just stand there, and you, Mr. Martian, come around and join me here, and you, Mrs. Martian, here? That's it. Close your eyes. Sleep, 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 sleep. Because when you wake up in the next few moments, you are going to find that you have become a Martian interpreter. You'll be able to interpret Martian back into English for us. Eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. On this momentous occasion, man meeting Martian, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome our science correspondent, Maggie Philbin? <laughs> Maggie, it's such a pleasure to have you here on this momentous occasion. Do you have some questions for Mr and Mrs Martian here? Well, yes, I'd like to start by asking Mr Martian, why has he decided to visit planet Earth? <laughs> He's waited ten years to see you. <laughs> Question now for Mrs. Martian. Um, what does she think the biggest difference is between life on Mars and life on Earth? <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> Question now for Mrs. Martian. Um, does Mrs. Martian find Earth men attractive? <laughs> Only the small ones. <laughs> what, what, she, what sort of features does she find particularly attractive about small men? <laughs> <laughs> very broad shoulders and a large... Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> it was totally natural. Nothing was unnatural in my head. It was just going along naturally. Basically, everything that, that, that was going on was real. Hello there. Hi. Having a good time tonight? Very good. Good. Sleep, 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 sleep. Because when you awake in the next few moments, you'll find an invisible force field surrounding your body. Eyes open, wide awake. So you're having a good time tonight, then, are you, sir? Fantastic. Yeah. I'd like you to go back to your seat, please. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Just back I will. to your seat. I will. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Amazing, isn't it? And I can actually do it to larger numbers of people as well. How else do you think we got our studio audience to stay here for the last few weeks? <laughs> but I promise that there will be no barrier to anyone else's enjoyment for the next few minutes because will you please welcome tonight's special guest, Chris Rea. Chris Rea. You all right? I'm fine. Yeah, good. I don't think he appreciates that I've just given him the skills it took Marcel Marceau about 30 years to learn. <laughs> oh, well, I'll be deactivating the force field during the break. See you in part two. Thank you very much. Now, listen to me very carefully. I'm only talking to you now if I specifically touch you on the shoulder. And I'm talking to you, sir. When you hear this piece of music, you'll suddenly believe that you're the legendary Tom Jones. You'll be up from your seat performing away for us in the centre of the stage. When you hear that piece of music, ladies, you're going to believe that you're the world's biggest Tom Jones fans. When you wake up in the next few moments, sir, when you hear this piece of music, you're going to believe that you are Rod Stewart. You know how Rod likes to strut himself up and down the stage. He likes to wiggle his bottom, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> when it stops, you'll stop. Wonder what the hell you've just been doing. When you wake up in the next few moments, when you hear this piece of music, you're going to believe that you are the one and only status quo. Yes, you'll have your uh, imaginary guitars. You'll be playing them away. Ready? Eyes open, everyone. Wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. I just want to have a quick word with you two ladies. Um, I've got something of yours here. It's a little bit personal, so I don't want to show everyone. Uh, they're yours, yeah? <laughs> and um, I've got yours as well. Would you like to go back to your seats? Lovely to see you this evening. Thanks very much. Let's give them a big round of applause, shall we? I wonder if you two gentlemen could do me a favour, because there's a fly somewhere in the studio here. It keeps buzzing around. Would you give it a swat if you see it? Yep. That'd be all right. Thanks very much. Can I have a quick word with you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you are <laughs> looking a little nervous, and I can understand that, because usually when I give somebody a broom in my show, it means that I'm about to ask them to do an impersonation of Elvis Presley. Well, if you just hold that for a moment, I promise I will not get you to be Elvis Presley. <laughs> Thank you. 
What on earth were you doing just then, sir? I think I was sweeping. Oh, good. <laughs> just have a seat. Don't you? Your seat, sir. The fly. Oh, it's the fly, was it? Is that right? Are you trying to swap the fly, were you? Um, yeah, something. I, I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. have a seat back down. Thanks very much. What's going on here, then? <laughs> Do you all know each other? No. 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 So, what's all this, then? <laughs> I don't know. I was sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Have a seat back down. Let's give him a big round of applause. For I hate Tom Jones. And um, when the music started, I just felt great and buzzing. And uh, especially seeing the girls coming out, I thought, oh, I need more of that. There was this Tom Jones, and I just had to be as close to him as possible and touch him and whatever. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Because when I awake you in the next few moments, you ladies are going to think that you are on a dating game show. However, for some reason or another, you will think that the man the other side of the petition is particularly unattractive. So you will want to be absolutely sure that you're not chosen this evening. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake. Yes, it's Find Your Mate. And here to help you in your search, Paul McKenna! Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Find Your Mate, the show that features more dodgy singles than the Radio 1 playlist. <laughs> Our first contestant is hoping to be a smash hit with at least one of the lovely ladies behind the screen, and he's got a tough choice because tonight's trio of temptresses makes Miss World look like Planet of the Apes. So <laughs> let's meet our lucky contestant, Chip from Endale. <laughs> How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Do you want to say hello to the lovely ladies? Hi, ladies. Hi. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to ask them some of those questions then, Chip. Okay. Through my work, I have to attend a lot of posh dinner dances. What would you do at these which would impress my boss? Okay, number one, what would you do to impress Chip's boss? Well, I've got really bad B.O. So, <laughs> I don't think anything that I could do would impress him. Number two. Well, I mean, I'd go along and dress up sort of with what Chip was wearing and sort of act as a male and then, you, you know, you'd just begin to wonder about him, really, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what would you do to impress Chip's boss? Um, well, i get very bad wind, so... <laughs> so I'd make sure I'd eat a lot of onions. <laughs> And sit right next to him. Yes, yes. Thanks very much, number three. <laughs> well, I know it's a difficult choice, but who would you say is in the lead right now? Well, that break and win thing kind of threw me, so I'm going to have to say number two. So lucky, lucky number two. I'm sure she's smiling as we speak. Oh, how lucky. Well, let's ask that final question, shall we, Chip? I'm very romantic. If we were alone in the moonlight, what sweet things would you whisper in my ear? Number one. Get lost. <laughs> Number two. I'd ask him to get one of those ear hair things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Um, I'd, I'd whisper, I'd move a bit closer, then you'd be able to pop the zit just on the side of my... <laughs> Well, I know it's a very tough choice, but who's it going to be? Well, I tell you, I like a woman that will is comfortable enough to pop my zits. So I'm going to have to go for number three. Lucky, lucky number three. <laughs> OK, let's see who you turn down then. Number one, would you come round and meet Chip, please? <laughs> <laughs> Not your 
what sort of bloke then? Oh no. What sort of blokes do you go for then? Oh, tall, blonde, Scandinavian. <laughs> so sorry, Chip. Okay, well thanks very much. <laughs> and you also turn down number two. Come round and meet Chip. Is that all we could get? <laughs> um, wouldn't you like to give him a kiss anyway? <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much anyway. Um, lovely to see you this evening. If you'd like to nip off uh, back there, thanks very much. <laughs> OK, the big moment, the moment you've been waiting for. Number three, would you come round and meet Chip, your mate? <laughs> Well, I bet you're very happy to see him. I wish I was number two or one. <laughs> so you don't want to go out with Chip? No. Sleep. Because when you wake up in the next few moments, you will see that you have just turned down a date with a Chippendale. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to go out with him? Um, can I change my mind? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. A big round of applause for Gus from the Chippendales. I didn't want the date, whatever, and I just, whatever I said, however abusive and obscene it was, I just did not want to win. I could see him for what he was, but I just thought he was ugly. Um, even though he was, even though he was tall and blonde, I still thought he was ugly. Have a seat back down. Now, I know you are a little bit disappointed turning down a date with a Chippendale. Um, do you have a favourite film star, a pop star, somebody you think's really attractive? Mm, Richard Gere. Richard Gere. Oh well, maybe on another show, maybe in the next series, we'll do something like that. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for another hypnotic half hour. Actually. <laughs> Sleep. Because when you wake up in the next few moments, Julie, you are going to think that I. I'm Richard Gere. <laughs> eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey, eyes and shine. <laughs> do we know each other? We do. How come? Um, you're Richard Gere. I see. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> you recognise me then? I do. <laughs> what do you think is the most attractive part about me? Um, your smile, definitely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, as I was saying, my thanks to my special guests this evening and to the stars of tonight's show, my volunteers, who, of course, will all be returned to their normal selves by the time they leave the studio. Well, all except for one, sleep. And for the rest of your life, you will now believe that I'm Richard Gere. <laughs> One of the perks of the job. <laughs> wakey, wakey, rise and shine. <laughs> Till next week, good night.